Act two, scene three. Knocking within. Enter a porter. Here's a knocking indeed. If a man were a porter of a hell gate, he should have an old turn in the key. Knocking within. Knock, knock. Knock. Who's there? In the name of Beelzebub. Here's a farmer that hanged himself on the expectation of plenty. Coming time, have napkins eat snow about you. Here, you'll sweat for it. Knocking within. Knock, knock. Who's there? In the other devil's name. Faith, he's an equivocator. What could swear in both the scales against either scale? Who committed treason enough for God's sake, yet could not equivocate to heaven? O oh, come in, equivocator. Knocking within. Knock, knock. Never at quiet. What are you? But this place is too cold for hell. I'll devour porter it no further. I have thought to have let it in some of all professions that go to the primrose way to the everlasting bonfire. Knocking within. Anon, anon, I pray you, remember the porter, opens the gate. Enter Macduff and Lennox. Was it so late, friend, ere you went to bed that you do lie so late? Faith, sir, we are carousing to the second cock, and drink, sir, is a great provoker of three things. What three things does drink especially provoke? Marry, sir. Nose-pating, sleep, and urine, lechery, sir. It provokes and unprovokes. It provokes the desire, but it makes away the performance. Therefore, much drink may be said to be an equivocator with lechery. It makes him and it mars him. It sets him on and it sets him off. It persuades him and disheartens him. Makes him stand to and not stand to. In conclusion, equivocates him in a sleep and giving him the lie, leaves him. I believe drink gave thee the lie last night. That did it, sir, in the very throat on me. But I requited him for his lie, and I think, being too strong for him, though he took my legs up some time, yet I made a shift to cast him. Is thy master stirring? Enter Macbeth. Our knocking has awakened him. Here he comes. Good morrow, noble sir. Good morrow, both. Is the king stirring, worthy Thane? Not yet. He did command me to call timely on him. I've almost slipped the hour. I'll bring you to him. I know this is a joyful trouble to you, but yet tis one. The labour we delight in physic's pain. This is the door. I'll make so bold to call, for tis my limited service. Exit. Goes the king hence today? He does. He did appoint so. The night has been unruly. Where we lay, our chimneys were blown down, and as they say, lamentings, heard I the air, strange screams of death and prophesying, with accents terrible, of dire combustion and confused events, new hatched the woeful time, the obscure bird, clamoured the lifelong night. Some say the earth was feverous and did shake. T'was a rough night. My young remembrance cannot parallel a fellow to it. Re-enter Macduff. Oh, horror, horror, horror! Tongue nor heart cannot conceive nor name thee. What's the matter? Confusion now hath made his masterpiece. Most sacrilegious murder hath broke ope the Lord's anointed temple and stole thence the life of the building. What is it, you say, the life? Mean you his majesty? Approach the chamber and destroy your sight with a new gorgon. Do not bid me speak. See, and then speak yourself. Exeunt Macbeth and Lennox. Awake, awake! Ring the alarm bell. Murder and treason. Banquo and Donalbane. Malcolm, awake! Shake off thy downy sleep, death's counterfeit, and look on death itself. Up, up, and see the great doom's image. Malcolm, Banquo, has from your graves rise up and walk like sprites to countenance this horror. Ring the bell! bell rings. Enter Lady Macbeth. What's the business that such a hideous trumpet calls to parley the sleepers of this house? Speak, speak. Oh, gentle lady, tis not for you to hear what I can speak. The repetition in a woman's ear would murder as it fell. Enter Banquo. Oh, Banquo, Banquo, our royal master's murdered. 
Whoa, alas! What, in our house? To crawl anywhere. Dear Duff, I prithee, contradict thyself, and say it is not so. Re-enter Macbeth and Lennox with Ross. Had I but died an hour before this chance, I had lived a blessed time, for from this instant there's nothing serious in mortality. All is but toys, renown and grace is dead. The wine of life is drawn, and the mere lees is left this folk to brag of. Enter Malcolm and Donalbane. What is amiss? You are, and do not know it. The spring, the head. The fountain of your blood is stopped. The very source of it is stopped. Your royal father's murdered. Oh, by whom? Those of his chamber, as it seemed, had done. Their hands and faces were unabandaged with blood. So were their daggers, which unwiped we found upon their pillows. They stared and were distracted. No man's life was to be trusted with them. Oh, yet I do repent me of my fury that I did kill them. Wherefore did you so? Who can be wise, amazed, temperate and furious, loyal and neutral in a moment? No man. The exposition, my violent love, outrun the pauser, reason. Here lay Duncan, his silver skin laced with his golden blood, and his gash stabs look like a breach in nature. For ruin's wasteful entrance there, the murderers steeped in the colours of their trade, their daggers unmannerly breached with gore, who could refrain that had a heart to love, and in that heart courage to make loves known. Help me hence, ho! Look to the lady. Why do we hold our tongues that most may claim this argument for ours? What should be spoken here, where our fate, hid in a ooger bowl, may rush and seize us? Let's away, our tears are not yet brewed. Nor our strong sorrow upon the foot of motion. Look to the lady. Lady Macbeth is carried out. And when we have our naked felties hid that suffer in exposure, let us meet and question this most bloody piece of work to know it further. Fears and scruples shake us, in the great hand of God I stand, and hence against the undivulged presence I fight of treasonous malice. And so do I. So all. Let's briefly put on manly readiness and meet in the hall together. Well contented. Exeunt all but Malcolm and Donalbane. What will you do? Let's not consort with them to help an unfelt sorrow in an office which the false man does easy. All to England. To Ireland, I. Our separate fortune shall keep us both the safer where we are. There's daggers in men's smiles. The near in blood, the nearer bloody. This murderous shaft that shot hath not yet lighted, and our safest way is to avoid the aim. Therefore to horse, and let us not be dainty of leave-taking. But shift away, there's warrant in that theft which steals itself when there's no mercy left. Exeunt.